I would like to welcome you to today's tutorial on marketing mix optimization with Bayesian networks. As you can probably tell, my voice is synthetically generated and thus sounds a bit artificial. With this kind of text-to-speech technology we hope to make all of our training materials accessible in more languages. To begin with our marketing science example, we first load a CSV file with the data import wizard into Bayesia Lab. Alternatively, we could directly connect to a database, but for this demonstration we choose a simple flat file format. Bayesia Lab's data import wizard now provides us with an initial overview of the data file. We can see that we have the marketing related variables, such as sales, radio spend, TV spend, hits, impressions, all shown in columns. Each row represents an observation. The next step in the import process relates to missing values processing. The small question marks in the table header indicate that several variables contain missing values. The amount of missing data is also shown in the information panel. Given that we have missing values in our data set, we need to define the missing values processing approach. We choose static completion for our example and we will elaborate further on this choice shortly. In Bayesian Lab, all continuous variables must be discretized, or binned, at the time of data import. With the exception of season, all variables here are continuous. Bayesian Lab gives us a choice of discretization algorithms. As our particular dataset was previously normalized, we apply the equal distances discretization with five intervals. Upon clicking Finish, Bayesian Lab now creates a new internal representation of our original dataset. All variables are now represented as nodes in the graph panel. Bayesian Lab can also display a summary of the discretizations performed. Double clicking on any of the nodes brings up the editor. Among many attributes that can be edited, we can see the interval ranges of the selected node. By hovering over the little question mark while holding the I key, we can see the number of missing values for each node. We now switch into the validation mode and then highlight all nodes in the graph panel. On the right hand side of the screen are the monitors each representing a node and showing a histogram of its value distribution. In Bayesian Lab, information theoretic measures, rather than statistical measures, are central to the learning algorithms. In particular, entropy is used to search for networks that best represent the underlying data. Put simply, entropy represents the uncertainty regarding the state of a variable. For our example, we show the entropy of the sales variable. If we set this node to a specific value, meaning that we know its state, the entropy will drop to zero. On the other hand, if we simulate a near uniform distribution, we will get a very high value for the entropy. A closely related concept is conditional entropy. We will illustrate this with a hypothesized relationship between the nodes sales and season. By drawing an arc between those two nodes, we create a simple Bayesian network and Bayesian lab will automatically create the corresponding conditional probability table. Now we can set evidence on season and then observe the posterior distribution of sales conditional app on season being set to autumn. Furthermore, we can retrieve the conditional entropy given this evidence. We repeat this for all seasons and record the corresponding conditional entropy values. As the seasons are uniformly distributed, we simply take the mean of the conditional entropies, in order to compute the expected value.
subtracting the expected value of the conditional entropy from the marginal entropy, gives us the mutual information. We have just manually computed the mutual information between two selected nodes. However, in the process of learning a Bayesian network, Bayesian lab will compute the mutual information between all nodes and do so entirely automatically. We will now learn a first Bayesian network using one of Bayesian Lab's unsupervised structural learning algorithms. More specifically, we use the maximum weight spanning tree. With this Bayesian network, we can update the missing values estimation. We do so by selecting probabilities learning from the learning menu. We thus replace the initially imputed values during the data import process. Now that we have better estimates for the missing values, we proceed to a more sophisticated learning algorithm, that is the EQ algorithm. We can see that the resulting network is more complex than the previous one. We use this new Bayesian network once again for another round of missing values estimation. In its current form, this network is not particularly easy to read. Bayesian Lab has an automatic layout algorithm which untangles the network for easier interpretation. Furthermore, we rotate and enlarge the network until it fits nicely on the screen. So we can get a sense of the strengths of the probabilistic relationships, Bayesian Lab can compute the arc force in this network. This function is available from the analysis menu, under visual analysis. The thickness of the arcs is now proportional to the arc force. We can also scroll through step by step, from the strongest to the weakest arc. Before we perform a more automated analysis, we will look at the dynamics of individual variables. For instance, we can set values to sales and then see the resulting values for profit margin. Target mean analysis is a rather intuitive automatic analysis function in Bayesian Lab. It simulates all nodes across their value ranges and records the corresponding values of the target node, which is sales. From the resulting plot it is very obvious that many of the curves are non-linear. It is very important to note that what we just performed was strictly observational inference. However, to predict the consequences of actions we have not yet taken, we need causal inference. Ultimately, we want to know what would happen, if we were to intervene in this domain, and actively set the marketing instruments to different levels, rather than just observing them at such levels. We can facilitate this kind of causal simulation by target means analysis with direct effect. This direct effects analysis is what we also want to use for the optimization of marketing instruments. However, we first require some further assumptions regarding causality. A causal interpretation is not quite as automatic as the direct effects analysis might suggest. Rather, we actually need to declare which variables are not eligible as formal causes. In our case, there is a number of them. For example, the overall print node is a deterministic summary variable of the underlying measures, so we want to exclude it from the optimization and rather look at the individual underlying causes. Another example is profit margin and exchange rate. Both of them are clearly not causes of sales. Bayesian Lab has a special way to declare such non-causes. We assign them to the special class of non-confounders. Beyond making them non-confounders, we also color code them for easier identification in the network. One more node requires special consideration, that is season. Season may very well be a cause in the sense that it can have an impact on sales. However, season is clearly beyond the control of any marketing manager. In Bayesian Lab, we need to assign the unobservable status to such variables.
as mentioned earlier, all variables had already been standardized prior to importing them into Bayesian Lab. In order to optimize the levels of these marketing instruments, we need to convert them into a common scale in terms of the resources they use. Typically, this would be a currency, for example dollars or pounds. We can use the cost editor to assign specific dollar amounts for one unit on the respective scale of each node. This brings us to the optimization process, which can be found under analysis, report, target analysis, resource allocation optimization. We now need to specify a number of parameters in the dialog box. For instance, we want to maximize the mean of the target and take into account the joint probability. Also, we must check direct effects. Finally, we need to define the total resource amount available for the optimization. For the first round, we simply set this to zero, so we search for the optimum with the same amount of resources that we had before. Once the optimization algorithm finishes, we obtain a report with the recommended changes to the levels of the marketing instruments. We see that the recommendation is to reduce the online spend and reallocate these savings to other media. The value mean column reports the simulated sales given the new marketing mix. We now repeat the optimization process, but we increase the budget by 50,000. Given the higher total budget, the marketing mix recommendation has somewhat changed, as can be seen in the new report. In the real world, there are often further constraints affecting the optimization. Perhaps there are long-term contracts in place that do not allow for the modification of spend levels. In our example, we will now fix the online spend level, which we define via the variation editor. We simply set the positive and negative variations to 0%. The resulting report now excludes online spend from its list of recommendations as that node has to remain unchanged. However, the other marketing instruments are optimized given this constraint. For further reporting outside of Bayesian Lab, any of the generated scenarios can be exported. Here, we are saving the final optimization scenario and are then opening it in a spreadsheet. The bar chart nicely summarizes the pre-optimization marketing mix, shown in blue, and the optimized mix, shown in red. This concludes today's tutorial, thanks for watching. Please join us again soon for further presentations about marketing science applications with Bayesian Lab.